All right. Is it recording? I guess it is. Listen, if you've been following the series, you'd know that we got done with page 13. And I drew page 14. Well, I roughed it in. Which is how I do things. And I also put in my, my text. Um, not all the text. There's going to be some dying leather wings here in this first panel. Um, here we have Blaze kind of just like running rampant through this uh, group of leather wings. And as is tradition, I'm going to start by outlining my panels. which are not horizontal. Because this is a battle scene, I like to give them just a little bit of an off set. And this is only a three panel page and one of the panels is borderless. So it's kind of like bing, bang, bang. And by offsetting it, they appear sort of wedge shaped. I don't know if that carries over, but I feel like when I reach the 13th, I mean the 14th page, I'm getting really close to the end. What's this here? Well, it looks like I was kind of doing a little extra drawing, but on the wrong layer, but it's the cool thing about, you know, once you, you kind of know what you're going for, you know, you know where you can get away with ad living. Which means things that you can draw without <laughs> having to have the pencils down there first. Um, which includes this sword. The blaze sword has grown over time. Maybe I made it a little bit too long here. It has to be big enough that you can hold, you can hold it with two hands if you need to, like a two handed sword. And the blade, because it's an energy or fire blade, it can it can grow or shrink in size to whatever he needs it to be. All right, that looks good. In this case, he's one-handing it. In D and D, we used to have this weapon called the Bastard Sword, which you could have one-handed or two-handed. And nobody really knew what it was. <laughs> it's like... So, you know, you just imagined it in different ways. Like, it's a, it's a big sword, but it's not as big as a two-handed sword. It's somewhere between a long sword and a two-hander. You know, it eventually just kind of becomes the katana because the katana you could have two-handed or one-handed. So I think that's what eventually everyone sort of collectively decided on. All right. Have I gone too far with this? I don't know. No, it doesn't go all the way up to his hips. It should be like. Like right around there.
Hmm. Anyway. Five minutes in, I'm starting to get a sense of it anyways. Oh, I don't like these lines because he has these sort of leg pieces to his armor. That really should be rendered all at once. And they have to match the forearm bits. Same problem here. Except, <laughs> maybe not. All right, looks like we're getting somewhere there. This is, um, Blaze's big scene. Where Blaze gets to finally cut loose on his enemies. Yeah, and you can see in this first one, he's just charging across this whole big group. And then he slashes these two guys. And then he's laying out this guy. And he's talking to him while he's, while he's beating him up. <laughs> he's saying, you know, they always tell me to stop showing off. Well, now there's nobody here watching. And there's nothing hold me back. I wanted to think of a surprising thing for him to say. The reason Blaze is such a show off is because he's so good. And he even tells them, he says, I was born for this. They think they've got him because they've isolated him till he's alone. Um, I think that might be a recurring theme in the in the Beast Rangers is that Snapper struggles to get the team to work as a team, and Blaze and Fang are both essentially individuals. They've already had one disagreement. Actually, I don't like that all the way up there. Oof. Let's pull this. Down to there. That sounds good. And somehow his tail.
a little drop shadow. Oops. Let's see if I can get more of this in there. Thanks. Yeah, that didn't take very long at all for the main figure. The leather wings have more complicated forms. One of the tough things about drawing them is, um, you know, they have these wings. They have, like, the, the outfits they're wearing are the easiest part. But attaching the wings, the ears, all of that can be kind of tough. All right. There's the blaze sword. Whoops. Blaze is a kind of egotistical character that likes to name stuff after himself. So he calls his, his uh, jet bike is the blaze cycle. The sword is the blaze sword. Sometimes he refers to himself in the third person, the Blazinator, the Toddmeister. Right. Not bad for a first stab at this page. It's going to take me a couple of days to finish it out. Especially since I was really loose on my pencils. So... But it's only three panels, so maybe it won't. I don't know. This is the... um. Leatherwing clutching his his midsection where he's just been slashed by the blaze sword. I'll have to you know what I mean, just show the carnage. I don't like how both of his feet are over there. Maybe I should mess with that a little bit. What if I have one foot out out here? He shouldn't need too much room on his legs because he's they're kind of bow legged. If I bring it back behind. Two, three, four. Well, 
It's better than having 10 figures in one panel, which is what I did on the last page. What if I have his other leg? How about this? I keep going back and forth. What if I have his other leg back behind and I put it behind the other figure? That might actually work. Because I could put it behind the other figure's wing and that would create more overlap. The trick is you always want to maintain this sort of three-dimensionality illusion. And we've already got him falling this way, like he's already kind of tilted over. Yeah. All right, let's give it a little bit more. I think we're going to go with that. We're, <laughs> we're limited to just the two colors of black and white and possibly a hatched gray. So we got to be very circumspect about what we're putting out here. All right, how about that? I think I would have made more simplistic bad guys next time. Well, the next one, I'm not going to be working on that just next. I think next I'm going to the Tarzan. But the next story is going to have, you're going to see Shadow Serpent and his um, his serpent warriors. Whoops or shadow bots or something. They're going to be robots, but they won't be like uh, snake robots. Shadow Serpent himself is like a snake, but he has an exoskeleton that makes him humanoid, so it's got arms and legs, but he kind of slithers into it. All right. Let's change it up that way a little bit. Of these wings. There we go.
not nearly as nice. Okay, this is the vibe check to see if I get the size right, which I think I've got the size about right. I think that line weight's a little insane right there. I don't like any of these white lines yet. All right. That looks okay. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right, so how do we get the four fingers? We're going to double up on this middle one. Make sure that we show that this pinky side is turning the hand a little bit in space. And then because his arm is up, his, his wing is less deformed than the crumpled wing on the other side. All right. And that should give us a sense of that second figure. Yeah, I think that second figure is good. I mean, obviously, we're going to keep cleaning it up. But as far as, like, when readers come to this part in the story, do they understand what's going on? I think the answer is yes. Will they think it's cool? <laughs> I 
think the answer is yes. Whoops, let's do that. In the cartoon universe, you can use action lines. We'll show him dropping his stun pull. This guy's getting killed. This guy's doubling over. This guy's been killed. This guy's already dead on the floor. Blaze is just going wild. All right. I will keep working on this. Please like, follow, and subscribe. And there will be more Beast strangers before you know it. Before you know it, there will be more. And then we'll be done with the story. All right. Keep on rocking.